redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people said, Amen. Verse, uh, verse 1 of chapter 20, And David fled from north in Ramah and came saved before Jonathan. What did I do? What is my iniquity and what is my sin before your father that he's trying to kill me? And he said unto him, God forbid, thou, thou shalt not die. Behold, my father will do nothing, either great or small, but this, but that he will show it me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It's not so. My father tells me about everything. And David swear moreover and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes. And he said, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly as the Lord liveth, and as my soul liveth, there will be a step between me and death. Then Jonathan said unto David, Whosoever thy soul desireth, I will even do it for thee. Verse 5, And David and Jonathan beheld tomorrow is a new moon, and I shall not fail to sit with the king and meet, but let me go, that I may hide myself in the field until the third day at even. Put a pen there, take your name, but God will hide you if necessary. God will hide you if necessary. The father had all missed me. They said, David earnestly asked, leave me, that he may run to Bethlehem the city, and there is yearly sacrifice for all of the family. If he save us, it is well, the servant shall have peace. But if he uh, be very wroth, and then be sure that the evil is determined by him. Therefore thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant, for thou hast brought the servant into the covenant of the Lord with thee. Notwithstanding, if there be any iniquity, slay me thyself, or why should you bring my father? Don't kill me. Don't just wait for him to kill me. And David said, Far be it from thee, for if I knew certainly that evil were determined to my father to come upon me, then would I not tell it to you? See, if, if, if you're loyal and you know something's going to happen to somebody, you'll tell them. Yes. I'm preaching. Yes. Then David, uh, then he said, David to Jonathan, who, who shall tell me, or what does our father answer? Uh, the brother and David said unto him, and Jonathan said, David, come, let's go in the field. And they went out, both of them, in the field. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord, God of Israel, when I have sounded my father about to, uh, tomorrow, any time on the third day, and behold, there it be a good toward David. And then I send unto thee, and show it thee. The Lord do so much more to Jonathan, but it may please my father to do evil. Then I will show it thee and send thee away, that thou may go in peace, and the Lord be with you as he has been with my father. Now help me preach. I just want you to pronounce a blessing on the person next door. Right Say, may the Lord be with you this morning. May the Lord be with you this morning. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Somebody by the hand and say, People ain't loyal no more. I'm so happy to see Ashanti with his new wife. Stand up, Ashanti. And lovely life of Phoenix today. She's too pretty for him. My brothers and sisters, I have read more verses than usual. Uh, because I want you to get the gist of the message and uh, I want you to hear everything that it said. The Bible says that a friend loveth at all times. Now I've learned some things in life that were hurtful but beneficial. And some things that are painful but they are necessary. Uh, let me give you three of those lessons. Lesson number one, everybody that I was a friend to was not necessarily a friend to me. If you've been there, say yes. yes. That's lesson number two. Everybody that I had been there for in times of difficulty never came to see me when my bottom fell out. Third lesson I learned is that people will come get you, use you, leave you, and lose you. I'll preach in a minute. I shared with you last week that I had a little book that Cheryl Jackson gave me when I was on sabbatical. It's called 101 Things God Can't Do. I gave you three last week. Let me give you five for a short time together. The first one that God can do, God cannot give glory to anyone else. In Isaiah chapter 42 and 8, 
He said, I am the Lord thy God, that's my name, and my glory will I not give to another. The second thing God can't do, Mother Flowers, God can't sleep. Yes, uh, Psalm 121 said, Behold, he that keep Israel, neither slumbers or sleep. And I'll talk about it a little more on Wednesday, but why should you stay awake when God's already awake anyhow? And some stuff you thought you could do, it didn't work, so you're waiting on him anyhow. Somebody must well go to sleep and say, God, I'm trusting you that everything will be all right in the morning. I just prophesied and I told somebody, I don't know who I'm talking to, but something's been worrying you. But the Lord just said, it's going to be all right in the morning. <laughs> Cast it down your road and say, it's going to be all right in the morning. what you needed to do, but I just thought about something I needed to fix on the night. That God can't do, God can't stop loving you. Jeremiah 31 says, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with love and kindness have I drawn thee. The fourth thing that God can't do, God cannot go unnoticed. When you go outside, the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his hand, he works, oh Lord, my God, when I am awesome one to consider all the world, thy hands have made, I see the star, I hear the roaring thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. I wish I had two, three people that knew he was great. <laughs> God can do is what we're talking about today. God cannot be uh, disloyal. What he said, he will do. I wish, sweet Holy Spirit and friends that may be streaming across the world or listening to me on the radio or the CD, CD or DVD, I wish we I had more people who possess this particular attribute, that attribute called loyalty. Say it with me, loyalty. Loyalty! We have awakened to the day where people's words don't mean a doggone thing. They'll tell you something and promise you something, and nothing ever comes of it. We have arrived in a time where you can't trust most of what people say. My late friend Humphrey used to say, Trotta, if you can find one true friend in life, count yourself as blessed. And uh, what scares me, is that so many people say stuff like, I don't care what happens, I don't care who leaves, I'm your ride or die, but just as soon as trouble comes, they are the first ones that disappear. Yes. I said yesterday, and I said yesterday at home going, you're not a real armor bearer if you run when the fight starts. Somebody got to tough it out. Now, I already know that I'm not going to get uh, much help from any amens as I get further than this. So I recorded some. If y'all be quiet, I'm just going to play my own amen. Because a lot of people like to tell the truth. Hey, y'all, loyalty isn't gray. It's black and white. Either you're completely loyal or you're not loyal at all. Yes, uh -huh. Only people you owe your loyalty are those who have never made you question names. I, I look for qualities and characteristics. Text that, tweet that, post that. Uh, I look for characteristics in people. Honesty is number one. Uh, respect uh, is number two. And absolutely the third one is loyalty. Loyalty and friendship, which is to me the same, created uh, all the worth that I've ever thought. And, and what I'm going to try to say is, Loyalty is worth more than a million dollars. Yeah, worth more. Now, beloved, there are seven stages of disloyalty. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, uh, verse 15, said, Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil in the vines, and our vines have tender grapes. Disloyalty is the little fox that spoils the vine in ministry, in, in, in church, in organization, in marriage, and in relationship. Yes, disloyalty will mess it up. Ignorance of its effect brings down years of labor. Loyalty is an unwavering devotion to a personal thing and can also be defined as uh, the willingness to make an investment or personal sacrifice uh, to strengthen a, a relationship. Loyalty should, however, not be confused with longevity or years of experience. 
disloyalty eats like a canker worm. Some are even oblivious to the fact that they're under attack by a dangerous spirit. Satan is slipping up his head and reducing righteousness and saying, you ain't this, that, or the other. And we have awakened to a day of relaxed Christianity and don't nobody want to live nothing, do nothing, say nothing no more. It should be noted that disloyalty is a process. And I hope I'm not disloyal in any way, but most of all, I want to be loyal to God. Because you can, you can trick all these other people, but you can't trick him. I'm going to say, yeah, you, 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 you can't hide from him. Everywhere he go, uh, he's already there. And so it's pertinent that we discuss the stages as most people are unaware that they are becoming or have already become disloyal. Can I have 15 minutes of your time? Yeah. Stage one is an independent spirit. Independent spirit. This is the first stage of disloyalty that must be vigorously attacked and dealt with to the point where a person belonging to a group, religious, association, relationship, marriage, firm, uh, develops an autonomous attitude of uh, behavior against the laid down rules. It's when you start smelling yourself and say you don't need nobody else because you know everything that you think you know. I'm preaching, this is the stage where the devil deceives a lot of people, uh, which makes them make independent choices. They afford what they've been promised, they go back on their word. If you remember Joab, Bible readers, chose to do what he was taught right in his own hands by killing the son of the king. It should be noted that the independent spirit is betrayal of one's commitment. How many people uh, stated, uh, started off with you, said they're going to be with you to the end, and they're the first ones to leave? And the, bad, the worst part about it, Teresa, is the same thing happened with Lucifer. You know, you get mad, you should go on and do what you're going to do, but you ain't got a right to take nobody with you. The Bible says he took the whole third of heaven. And that's the way some of us do in this modern church. We get mad at one person because you're mad, you want everybody else mad. Because you're deaf, you want everybody else to leave. I'm going to preach this till I get blue in the face. Because you need to sat down somewhere and learn of the Lord. Because everywhere you go, you're going to find something that is not quite like it should be. Stage number two is offense. When people are easily offended, they rapidly become disloyal. The loyalty should not only be from the bottom up, but also from the top to the bottom. Offense could be the result of a hurt. People who hold hurt and pain in their hearts by refusing to let go most often are the recipient of offense. Uh, let me say something since I'm pastor for the day. You shouldn't be holding the grudge uh, two, three years. Y'all still ain't speaking to each other. One of y'all might die with a heart attack. At some point, she said, we need to get this together. In, uh, in 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel 13, Absalom was offended because uh, his brother had hurt him, and, the, and, and this felt was unforgivable. Uh, hey, y'all, some people will walk around offended with their feelings on your shoulder, and you don't, you don't even know what you're supposed to have done or what you're supposed to have been saying. They stop speaking, and they walk around with it just sucked on the bag for the lemon. And, and a lot of times you ain't said nothing at all. But you better watch them people around you because they'll say, you know, he said so and so, so and so. Well, I'm grown, you're grown, you ought to come and say, did you say that? Y'all make like you need to check. Gotta be careful of victims of offense. Church members are angered at each other over past dwelling, past dealing. Something happened seven, eight years ago, and we still mad at each other. People who have been wounded want to also do the same to other people. Church people are angry with the leadership because they want more employees and bosses. Offense breeds disloyalty, and, and, and it has to be cut off. At the first sign of disloyalty, you better cut them off or they're going to mess you up. Yes. It took me 50 years to learn this, that when you see a sign, but see a leopard don't change its spots. To do something, you got to cut your losses early because you already see it's not going very well. I'm trying my best to preach. 
Stage three is passivity. Offense leads to this. People become involved or unnecessarily withdrawn when they've been hurt. They become passive. In this passive stage, they entertain and breed disloyal thoughts. This is the stage where they keep things back and plan things not in line with the word of God. It should be noted that people at this stage claim passivity helps to keep them sane. Invariably, it makes the inter, uh, uh, entertain uh, unholy desires and thoughts. They become mean and vindictive. And strangely enough, the same person that looks mean and talking bad, and six months ago, they were grinning in your face. <laughs> Y'all might not shout, but this won't help you in a minute. Fourth stage is critical. This is the point where, we, where people develop critical a a attitudes and critical views about everybody and everything. Critical of everybody and everything, leadership and, and subordinates. Critical of everybody else. And, and here's, the, here's the problem is, you you critical about what everybody else, but what in the hell have you done? Not much. <laughs> you sit around and be critical and find the fault. But when you start doing something that made you understand that he had a whole lot to do because you've been sitting like a bump on the law and you don't have the right to know and mercy. Thoughts are magnified every time uh, uh, everything else seems unacceptable. This is the point where people want others to follow their line of thoughts and bring their own faults and others. This is where you also look cliques and gossip groups come from and bring down existing structures. And here's the thing, because you're angry, you want everybody else to be angry. Because you broke, you want everybody else to stay broke. Y'all about to miss it? I'm going to preach a message real soon. I'm going to preach a message real soon. I'm getting richer and y'all getting madder. Yeah, because when people don't understand what the Bible says, they don't get they, they don't their part, so they don't get their part. But I declare, if, I, if the Lord give me just a little longer, I'm going to be able to treat everybody whatever I want to treat them. Because he told me that the fellow on the top of the hill belong to him. This is the point where people want others to follow their line of thought, uh, and they bring the fault in others. And, and, and because they have a change of heart, they want everybody else to change their heart. I've seen people leave this church, and rather than just get your letter and go somewhere else, you try to get all your friends and everybody like you to come go with you. And the truth of the matter is, you over there and don't fit. Y'all ain't like me. I'm trying to do something. Got too much pride to say I'm going back where I belong. Preach, Bishop! Yeah. It's just going to uh, leave it. Please. The problem is, people ain't loyal no more. Help me preach. Tell your, tell your neighbor, say, the preacher just ain't loyal no more. <laughs> Paul had to deal with it. The Bible said, after all I did for Demas, Demas has forsaken me for this present world, but only Luke is with me. Jesus had to deal with it when they asked Peter, uh, they said, ain't you the one that was hanging out with Jesus? And he said, no, I, was, I don't know. I don't even know nothing about him. The Bible said he denied him three times. And then there was Judas who hung out with him and ate together and hung out together who sold him for 30 pieces of silver, which is equivalent to $18. Must I preach a few moments? So let me just tell you, welcome to the club. You will have to deal with some disloyal people at some point in your life. Before I jump into my points, let me just give you a friendship or loyalty test. I mean, going fast, you gotta get the tape or whatever. But loyal, to loyal people, hey, loyal people don't believe the latest rumor about you. Loyal people don't participate in the he say, she say. Loyal people are with you whether you're right or when you're wrong. And, and if they if they disagree, they will wait until y'all alone and then y'all and tell you what to and push you out in private, but they will not embarrass you in public. Loyal people are concerned about your well-being. So they don't want to make it a mess, but they'll hold it on whatever when y'all get together. If they really your friends, they'll tell you what you look like, smell like, where you've been, who you've been with, and who you shouldn't be with. Ah, loyal people are ride or die. If you find hiding with you, if you're crawling low, they're with you. I'm 
wish I had one person that would go to him and say, Lord, I need real friends in my life. Lord, I, need real I don't need no fat weather friend. I don't need people that's just going to be here when things go well. But Lord, send me the right people. Come on, say it with me. Say, Lord, send me the right people. Here's the test. I got 10 points to the test. Here's the test of friendship. Number one. True friends offer supportive comments and encouragement. If that person that you're around does not ever encourage you, that ain't your friend. Number two, true friends communicate openly with each other. They talk about everything. Number three, true friends keep, uh, 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 keep themselves away from the rumor mill. Number four, true friends make time for one another. If I'm really your friend, you really my friend, and I ring your boy at Bill Bell at 1 o'clock in the morning, if we're friends, you're going to open the door. Y'all ain't hear me. We want friends, but we're on the run. Sometimes people just need you to talk to them for just a little while. I know you're busy, but can you give me a minute here or there? Because I'm your friend. True friends keep it 100. I'm just going to keep it 100. Y'all can have 20 seats. Y'all going to keep it 100, just me and you. Both give 50% or more. Number six, true friends are true to their word. Yes. Whatever they say is going to happen. Number seven, true friends don't have ulterior motives. I don't need you to be my friend because of my platform. Let me jump into the text and, and pull out some points. 
Uh, this is a sad chapter in the life of Saul, Jonathan, and David. David goes to Jonathan convinced that Saul is, is, is intending on putting him to death. Would you talk to your neighbor saying, there's some folk that don't want you to live. And these were family. David is seeking to learn what he has done to call Saul to uh, feel this way. Jonathan can't believe his ears. It is simply inconceivable for Jonathan that Saul has actually gone back on his word after he promised that he would not put David to death. I tell you, people tell you one thing, one minute tell you something else. After that. David's determined to convince Jonathan that the fears, uh, the fears are not paranoid delusion, but, but as were Saul's fears. So he takes an oath takes an oath to assure Jonathan that he's telling the truth. The seriousness of the situation finally sinks into Jonathan. As the Lord works on Jonathan, it becomes abundantly clear that Saul is intending on killing his friend David. The intent was so griping that Paul might even kill his own son if he got in the way. That's the the acceptance of reality is a significant turning point in the relationship between David and Jonathan and between David and Saul. David put a covenant relationship first. They had a covenant relationship, Jonathan and David. He does it by putting his life in Jonathan's hand. It is an occasion for confirmation of covenant between David and Jonathan, and also a very uh, sad part. Now, I, I want to jump in, 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 my, in my point, but let me just help you. Just because I have a man friend, and he my friend, and we hang out together, together does not mean that I'm gay or we're sleeping together. And just because she got a girl that she hang out with. So y'all got too much gutter mentality. Just said, uh, it, 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 they got to be doing something. They got to be doing something. Lord, deliver me from these nosy, deceitful people that don't have no business of their own. So they want to know who's riding with who and where they go after church. You better find time to take care of your own business and leave some other folks alone. Y'all ain't liking me preach the truth. But the truth of the matter is that some things may look obvious, but you don't know till you see it for yourself. I ain't talking about what somebody told you. You've got to see it for yourself before you really know it. Let me jump into my points in my Easter speech. Point number one, loyalty must be put to the test. Can you get me? Let me just jump out here. Uh, if, 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 uh, if Johnson is my friend, now everybody knows that Johnson's a little special. He threw paydays at us on Sunday. Hallelujah to God. But Johnson's my friend. He's loyal to me. I'm preaching. I've been preaching 41 years, soon to be pastor 35 years. Now, if he sees me on the street, in the middle of the street, and I'm half uh, dressed and I'm pissy drunk, if he is loyal to me, he doesn't tell anybody. He doesn't call the newspaper. He doesn't tweet it, he doesn't post it, he doesn't put it on Facebook. He takes me home and brews a pot of coffee and give me a Red Bull and sober me up and let me take a shower and loan me a shirt and some crawl. That's loyal. Somebody, your friend, you'll let them wear your stuff and, they, and, and, and if it ain't nothing but floor room, you'll make them a pallet on the floor rather than have them sleep out in the low zero weather. Lord, help me preach your word because how other friends have populated us and we don't know the value of having loyal people in our lives. Lord, help me. David then asked Jonathan to execute him rather than uh, turn over to Saul. If I'm, if I'm guilty, you're just going to kill me. Hear me, you all. When you're under great stress as David is, you can begin to get suspicious even of those who love you. I'll go further than that. You'll get suspicious of those that you already trusted. I'll go further than that. You'll get suspicious of your own blood and sweat relatives. Yes. Be suspicious of the emotions uh, when you, uh, you feel you are under pressure because David sounds paranoid. In verse 9, 
greet it when you get a chance. Is an appalled at any suggestion. And David said, Far be it from you, for if I should indeed learn that evil has decided uh, by my father to come upon you, then I would tell you about it. Then David said to Jonathan, will you tell me if your father answers honestly? Whatever your father, my father said, I'm still going to look out for you because you're my friend. I wish I could preach this like I feel it. Uh, we've got to understand that if the father really intends to kill David, he can be assured that his own, only son, Jonathan, is going to warn him. That's loyalty. Yeah, loyalty, uh, loyalty is you driving down Yates and your car hits hold and you need a muffler and you know somebody going to be on that same street 30 minutes from now. Loyalty will make you pick up the phone and say, honey, don't go down Yates and tear up your car, but go down Jeffrey because I, y'all don't hear me. Make sure, okay, you didn't get that. It's like this. If, if you're loyal and you know that your girlfriend is getting ready to marry this guy who, who is not honest to her about his sexuality, you don't say that ain't none of my business. You don't say, I ain't gonna say nothing. Uh, you don't say, well, that's their business. She'll find out after all. But if you love her and you love her to her, you pull it aside and say, now, girl, let me tell you. If he don't take it, let me take it. Because you don't want the blood on your hands if you could have helped somebody. It's just a matter, and I know it's a loose age or what have you, but how dare you allow me to be intimate with somebody and you already know that they tested positive. What kind of friend are you? What kind of friend are you? Back to the text. The possibility of the plan may backfire. Suppose King Saul does intend the king kill David and that he kills Jonathan from trying to, to learn and the intentions toward David are. If Saul kills Jonathan for trying to help David, who will want David then? What I have spelled out bluntly is David says much more delicately in verse 10. Who will tell uh, if your father answers harshly? Now here's the test. And I hope I help somebody. Can you be loyal even if it affects your character? Because you know, some friendship will cost you. This ain't a shower message, but I hope it makes you better. Can you be loyal if the thing that you do may mar your image? Can you be loyal when your life's in danger? I got lamb blasted by the ministers of Lions back here in the 90s. Uh, but I decided I wasn't going to be offended when people say, well, you know, uh, Charlie got the gay church on the south side, and that must mean he must be gay as well. And some people still say stupid stuff like that. But I had to realize uh, that whatever they say, I don't have to make it the truth, y'all. <laughs> And uh, I made a commitment, and preachers, you got to make a commitment to love people, whether they're gay, whether they're straight, whether they're Horace, whether they're weed heads, whether they're adulterers, whether they're alcoholics, because the Bible says such as for some of you. As a matter of fact, everybody in here is an ex-son. Yes. I wish I had it on this church. Tell yes. somebody I'm an ex-son. somebody to stand by your side until you walk your way in the deliverance. I wish I had somebody to push me a little bit. Instructions for the loyalty test. 
Uh, hey, uh, trust is earned and loyalty is proven through testing. If you want, here, let me help you. If you want to test the loyalty of a person, loan them some money. Loyalty to David. 
I'm sure the rest of the family and all the world would say, how in the world your daddy's mad at him and want to hurt him and here you are want to help him and be on his side. Well, just let me tell you, a family or no family, right is right. Y'all ain't not this here. And when you make covenant with someone, sometimes people don't understand it. They don't understand your loving. They don't understand your giving. They don't understand why you would allow them back in. But you've got to let that be their problem. And you be loyal to whom you are loyal to. I need people that are loyal to me in this season of my life. I ain't scared of Commonwealth Edison. I ain't scared of the mayor. I ain't scared of the governor. But I got some people that's loyal to me. If I get locked up, they'll bail me out. God, I'm going to give you just what you need. I wish you'd put that in somebody's spirit. So you are never alone. God will give you just what you need. God has the ability to wake somebody up and get them up so they can bless your life and your life will never be the same. I'm going to prophesy to 50 people right now that have had a real bad year so far. The Lord would have me to let you know that before August, your life will never be the same. There's a turning and a changing and an adjustment and a fixing because he ain't going to let you go like that. I haven't seen or you heard. Need to have it in the hearts of me what God has in store for you. I swear I need to bother you much, but talk to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, God's got a whole lot in store for you. And you don't have, you don't, you don't have to wait till. Man, okay. It's all you can shut down. I got to close this real now. There needs to be a final outcome in the area of loyalty. If you're loyal, or if they're loyal, y'all got a mutual love. Every year you have no bad days. Harpo loves me, I love Harpo. We had some seasons. But, you know, I'm trying to tell y'all something. Life is too short. Yeah. I thought one day I'd say, you know, come on home. Let's get over what happened this and the other. Been here ever since. Man gave me a godson. Glory to God. Yeah, glory to God. The lawyer is there. There's certain people you can't tell nothing to. But there's some other people that you tell them they'll die with it on the inside. Because they're loyal. Throw your hand up and say, Lord, keep me around with some loyal people. They are. Uh, you won't be able to find out who's loyal until one, you get in trouble. Two, you do something they don't like. Because when you do something they don't like, Negroes will turn on you. Or number three, the jury is out on you. And so is the gossip. If you believe everything that hit on the internet about me over the past 10 years, you wouldn't stay here. But some of y'all got sense enough to know that anybody can type anything and not say anything. And it don't necessarily be the truth. Lord, help me preach your word. And so we get to verse 19. And it would take a few days for David to learn the outcome of his plan absent. When you stayed somewhere for three days, you shall go quickly to the place where you hid yourself on that event for day, and you shall remain by uh, the stone Ezer. Ezer. Teresa, Ezer. Ezer in 19 is the rock that shows the way. Therefore, David was to stay by the rock and stay in the way. Like David, you might hear today be at the crossroads worried about uh, what, and, and can't figure this out, where you're supposed to go. I got good news for you. I serve somebody that's waiting to direct you. In all my ways, acknowledge him and he will run. All you got to do is stay close to Ezra. What does Ezra mean in the Hebrew? It means the rock. That shows the way. That's all you got to do day by day is stay near the rock day by day. We used to have songs that where can I go to when all of life is raging. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the rock. Brothers and sisters, even in your devotional life, if it's not what it should be, take a little bit and add on to it and keep adding on to it. Because God is faithful enough to excel you and allow you to grow where he wants you to grow. God blesses us in spite of us. I got two right here. Y'all missing. I say God blesses us in spite of us. 
on the day you feel the furthest from God, you're the closer to Him than you've ever been before. I wish I had one person that understood that there's never a time that God is not ready and there. The psalmist said, He is my refuge and my strength. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from His noise and pestilence. He shall cover me with His wings. Okay, verse 20 through 23, and I quit. Recorded the proposed secretly communicated outcome. He said, I'm going to shoot three arrows to the side uh, as though I shot at a target. And behold, I will send a boy and go find the arrows. And if I specifically say to the, uh, to the lad, behold, the arrows are on the side of them. Get them and bring them. And no safety, uh, and, uh, uh, there is safety to you and no harm as the Lord lives. That's a good one to encourage somebody. Say, neighbor, as the Lord lives. Y'all ain't said it. Say, as the Lord lives. Your so safety is no longer a problem. Through the valley of the shadow of death, you'll fear no evil. Hallelujah. Verse 23. But if I say to David, young man, behold, the arrows are gone. Uh, and uh, the Lord has sent you anyway. David is here for three days while the test is being conducted. Don't rush God. God might be hiding you because it ain't time for you to come out. He wants you to come out on top. Wants you to come out better than you went in. So David stays three days. At the end of the period, he's coming to the field where they're presently standing. And Jonathan will signal the outcome to him. Jonathan shot the arrow three times. And though he was aiming for a target, Joseph will send an errand boy to retrieve the arrow. If Jonathan directs the young lad to seek the arrow in Jonathan's direction, then David should understand that Saul's intention toward him are good and that he can come out of hiding. When loyalty is established, you too can come out of hiding. But if Jonathan directs the lad to seek the arrows beyond where the lad is, then David is understanding that Saul intends to harm him and he should flee. Either way it goes, his friend proves his loyalty. Try that again. Either way it goes, his friend proves his loyalty. So we get to verse 23, the covenant between David and Jonathan is mentioned in connection with the whole, uh, with the whole plan. And so my brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you real well. Enjoy the rest of your day, but tell somebody I got God on my side. God on my side. And God has given me loyal people to look out for me. Mm. It's one thing, it, it's one thing to tell people you care, it's another one to show it. One thing to tell people that you're coming, it's another thing to show up. Undaunted by danger, Jonathan courageously acted to save David's life. Hear me when I close. When we develop strong relationship, we also are called to demonstrate the actions that we care. C-A-R-E, this is it. That's the acrostic. C-A-R-E can help us remember the four elements uh, for relationship, friendship, and loyalty. The C is challenge. If you got a real friend, they gonna challenge you to grow spiritually. A good friend knows the importance of turning the conversation toward matters of faith. You've got to be challenged. I don't need everybody around me to say yes, 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 yes. I need somebody to say, you might want to think about that. I'm trying to preach in one way I do. The, 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 the A in care is affirm. Affirm your friend's visit, a phone call, or a note. Can let your friend know how important he or she is and can keep your friendship strong. No problem, I love texting too. But sometimes, don't text, just pick up the phone and say, I can do it. Don't call nobody because you just need something. Just pick up the phone and say, I just want to make sure you're all right. Y'all ain't hearing me talk because the impersonality has taken away the endearment to talk to one another. Everybody know Wade is my friend. Some preachers I don't answer because they want me to come preach. They want to know when I write a sermon, when I get points, what have you. And it's a delight to get a call from a friend. And Wade say, L, 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 what you doing? I said the same thing I've done last time, answering your call. And we go, L, L, I'm sitting by the pool. I said, okay. And the grapefruit falling out of my tree. I said, okay. He said, I've heard it was cold in Chicago. I said, yeah, it is. 
I ain't called to do nothing. I just wanted to hear your voice. I don't want no money. I, I, I don't want this and the other. I just want to hear your voice. Please take this on with you. There are some people that don't want to text. They don't want to borrow nothing. They don't want to borrow no clothes. They don't need a ride. They just want you to say, I'm here for you. I love you. I'm going to with you. Lord, help me to. You affirm their value by saying, I remember when you did this, that, that for me. And I thank God for who you are to me. Because a lot of other friends were not nothing much other than leeches trying to suck the very blood out of my life. The R in care is respect. Respect the wishes and, and feelings of your friend. No one wants a friend with whom ideas, dreams, and concerns fall on deaf ears. A good friend will hear you out. Lord have mercy. A good friend will hear, 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 hear where it is. A good friend will hear you out without judging you. I was with a friend of mine Thursday night in a lot of trouble. In a lot of trouble. He lived, he lived, he lived, he lived out of his house, out of his car. Church so he came to church him up in a lot of trouble. And I realized I said that he called him, he didn't need me to quote no about scripture. Y'all help me. He had a lot of trouble, serious trouble. Could be, he could do time. Serious trouble. He could do time. And so one another pastor said, Why would you go out with him? I said, Because he's my friend. And before he's turned in, he needs to know he's my friend. Y'all hear me talk. And if he's your friend, you got to give them a sounding board. Sometimes that's all people need is somebody that's going to listen to them. Lord, you have enough to say, let's kick it and listen. So C in your notes, challenge A in your notes, affirm R in your notes, respect. And the last one, if you're going to be loyal and have friends, encourage. <laughs> Encourage your friend through compliments by doing good things. Jesus. Even though a vision don't make sense to you, you still encourage it. Nobody's ever going to see your dream like you see it. But as a friend, encourage it. I'm the master cake picker around here.
activity at Valley Every Sport. We realized, Lord, if we had a million dollars, we got sick. Could one of those dogs give us a glass of water? We need a friend. First of all, teach us to be loyal and then put loyal people in our lives. Let the six hit the well, let the old first fruit for me. And let the down try to be uplifted. Let this marinate until we return to this pulpit on Tuesday and next Sunday. Make a name for yourself. Now, Lord, put on somebody's heart somebody they need to call. <laughs> somebody they need to just check on. Somebody need to look at the relationship and say, I wasn't as loyal as I could have been. Save the unsaved, reclaim the backslide, and give us victory, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. I've had the privilege of introducing a lot of people.